The Congressional Human Rights Caucus is uh, very pleased to open this hearing on human rights issues in Yugoslavia. I think it's important for all of us to begin by underscoring the purpose of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, which is a bipartisan activity of the Congress, and which has one single objective, and that is to diminish and hopefully eventually to eliminate human rights abuses wherever they occur. The Serbian government, acting with substantial support from the national government, is brutally repressing human and political rights in the autonomous province of Kosovo, which is 90% of the population of which is Albanian. And the fact of the matter is that these struggles are going on today, and, and the Albanians today need our help. It's time for the United States to demand justice in Yugoslavia. No more business as usual in Belgrade. No more business. We want Yugoslavia officials to know that as long as they abuse their own people, they shouldn't expect any support from America. America has the leverage, and we should use it. U Yugoslavia should know that it can never achieve economic growth without a growth in their respect for freedom and justice. The Serbs are the most numerous among Yugoslav nations, and they are the most degraded and the most subjugated in the Yugoslav multinational state. This degradation and subjugation caused by the ideology of an erroneous national policy instituted by Tito and the Comintern Party. The most distinguished member of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, a member of its executive committee, and an indefatigable fighter for human rights uh, for many years, Congressman Ben Gilman of New York. The raging tide of democratization in Eastern Europe makes more salient the issue of human rights and political autonomy for ethnic Albanians in the Kosovo province of Yugoslavia. In a recent past, military presence and violence and harassment in the province of Kosovo has provided an ominous reminder of the repression that comes from ethnocentric attitudes that have no place today in modern society. A distinguished former colleague, uh, most effective uh, former member of the Executive Committee of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, uh, who has uh, fought for human rights uh, on many continents and in many different situations and who has taken uh, such a prominent leadership role on this issue, uh, the Honorable Jody Ogarde. In Geneva, I went there because Mr. Hadri was shot down because he was ready to deliver to the special rapporteur the 34 names documented. I took those names literally off his body, his wife gave them to me, and I continued that journey under threats and I had to wear a bulletproof vest. Apartheid is alive and well. It now exists in Yugoslavia in the Kosovo province. It is now gone from South Africa, or at least it's going. And Yugoslavia has a Nelson Mandela, at least the Albanians have, Adam Damace, who was in jail for over 27 years. And Nelson Mandela was released before even any talk of releasing Adam Damace occurred. If this is America, and if we're going to stand up for a system that is supposed to be equal and fair, certainly our government has to take a strong position. And I hope we're not going to be swayed by all of a sudden this generosity that comes on the day of our hearing when you know they try to cancel this hearing, postpone it, and do so many other things. The term crime of apartheid is defined and it shall apply to inhuman acts committed for the purpose of establishing and maintaining domination of one racial group of persons over any other group of persons or systematically oppressing them. That is what has gone on in South Africa. That is what's going on right now in Kosovo, even as we speak, because the state of emergency has not been lifted. That's what they said. Let's see what they're really doing. And they don't let too many people in to see what they're doing. I went there twice. 
I could not meet with the press. I was forced out of the hotel in Pristina, forced to do a press conference on the street, and they threatened to arrest me for a public display because that was against their law. You cannot talk on their streets. It's incredible that a system like this exists in the world today when there are two million, by their count, Albanians in that province, over 90 percent, and they want to emasculate them in every way. The continuation of apartheid and the denial of democracy cannot restore political stability either in Yugoslavia or in Kosovo. The United States Congress, Mr. Chairman, has contributed to the liberalization of other countries in Eastern Europe, and I urge that it contribute likewise to the improvement of human rights conditions in Kosovo and Yugoslavia. I'm asking you, were the conditions under Tito better? Since really, that is when communists really reigned. Let me say this. I didn't spend much time studying Tito in my history books. I was studying Too Patrick bad. Henry, Thomas Paine, and I could say this, that... Mr. But Chairman, I had, will no, you ask me. both sides but, to refrain from applauding yes. so we can get on with this? But I, I can say that recently I've spent a lot of time studying Mr. Milosevic. And let me tell you, he doesn't do himself or his people justice. I met with many prominent Serbs and had many good conversations with them in Belgrade. But the kind of political rancor he is creating for his own personal ambitions will be the undoing of his great no. republic and the undoing that, of Yugoslavia if he persists. No. I went yes. to speak to Milosevic. He wouldn't speak to me. Now, maybe I'm not the one he wants to speak to, but maybe there are others he should speak to. But how about you and me deciding to meet to see if we can find reasonable voices on both sides to put them across the table to finally get equality for everybody in Yugoslavia, because that's the way it is here in well, America, and that's God's you know, way. You know. As the governments of Eastern Europe embrace the idea of freedom, Yugoslavia, who once led the way uh, in Eastern Europe, has not made the progress others have. The democratic forces emerging in Yugoslavia have been met with crackdowns, incarceration of political prisoners, and imposition of martial law. For over a year, Serbian authorities imposed a state of emergency in the province of Kosovo. However, despite oppressive actions taken by the Yugoslav government, democratic political groups have blossomed and are now calling for autonomy and democracy. Bishop Paul of Prizren, who is sitting here before you, neither his high ecclesiastic rank nor his venerable age prevented his attackers, his Albanian attackers, from beating him savagely twice in the streets of prison. Today, when everything is changing for the better in Eastern Europe, Kosovo alone remains in the grip of insanity of a communist creation, the victims of which are the Serbian population of Kosovo and its shrines. The Christian West cannot or perhaps will not see this. Once before in history, because of this short-sightedness of the West, the Balkans, which at that time were the most cultured part of Europe, the very source of its civilization, and the Balkan Christians remained enslaved under the Ottoman rule for two centuries longer than they need have done. Must history always repeat itself? We have not come here to beg, but to tell the truth. And we have here with us some of the most active initiators of democracy, movements for human rights in Kosovo, Albanians. And I want to introduce the first panel, Dr. Ibrahim Rogova, would you step to the table, please? And Professor Gazman Pula. The official policy and even more so the actual governmental practice carried on with a repressive approach uh, toward the Albanians in Yugoslavia. Such an approach produced vast and most drastic violation of individual human rights. Albanians, not only in Kosovo, but in Yugoslavia in general, were subjected to countless violations of their individual human rights, which were meant and amounted to vast violation of their na national rights as well. Uh, I would uh, add, I would add uh, to this statement that uh, there are almost no Albanians in Yugoslavia left who have not been or have not received some kind of police treatment. One of uh, yeah. one of such being Mr. Rugova himself. 
this does uh, this does uh, this requires no comment and i will end with a with a proverb of uh, an albanian proverb saying the good friend is to be proven in hard times the guards called out each individual's name and placed us one by one against a wall this followed with severe beatings 20 guards surrounded me and proceeded to beat me with their nightsticks. This beating, which was the first of five, lasted for about five minutes. After this first beating, we were taken to another site where we registered. Once we were registered, I was again taken away by the guards, and in the presence of the local doctor, the guards proceeded to beat me. The guards had also invited local, local Serbian civilians to participate in this tragic event. Слушајуќи о недавно страдање албанските деца и млади хљуди, као човек и хришјани, желим да кажем. Mr. Chairman, Congressman Diagardi's words about the sufferings of Albanian children and young people prompt me to say that. Žalim zbog patnje i smrti svakog ljudskog bića, pa i braće Albanaca, jer je za svako ljudsko biće Isus umro. That as a man and a Christian, I grieve for the suffering and death of every human being, and also for the death and suffering of my brother Albanians, because Christ died on the cross for every one of us. Sadašnje vođe Albanaca, okrenuši čurak naopako, pretvorili su se u demokratije i očegno su rešili da živote neki svoji mladi ljudi žrtvuju. The current, the present leaders of Albanians who have now turned turncoats in relation to their political past have decided to lay down the lives of some of their children. Decenijama su međutim koristili tu istu komunističku vlast nad nasiljem srpske dece, crkava i naroda na Kosovu i Metohiji. However, they have for decades used the same communist authorities in order to tyrannize Serbian children, Serbian Orthodox Church, the entire Serbian uh, population. Uh, in the final panel, we're going to add two gentlemen that will make very short statements, but the, uh, the gist of the panel will be Dr. Recep Chosun. I'd like Dr. Chosun to come to the, uh, the the table, he's a professor from the University of Pristina, professor of literature. No demonstrations, please. Hands down, please. Yeah. And also, uh, Professor Lulieta Pula Picciri, she's the sister of Professor Gazman Pula. Is she here, uh, Professor Picciri? Yes. She is uh, also a professor at the University of Pristina, and she's president of the Women's Association of the Democratic Alliance of Kosovo. And also, I'd like to, uh, would you sit in the middle, please? Uh, if she would move to the middle. I'd like uh, Mamadan Ramalaku, ambassador, former ambassador from uh, uh, Yugoslavia to the United States, an ethnic Albanian to be at the podium, and uh, Dr. Samir Rapishti. For 10 years now, we have been living under the state of emergency, which has been repeated three times and which was held, by, continu which was held uh, by continuously more sophisticated means, methods, and instruments. These were years of the most cruel aggression against the elementary rights of the individual, the family, and the Albanian people in general in Yugoslavia. During the 10 last years, the regime has deprived the right of living to more than 100 Albanians, including young, young and old, which could, not even bury them, which could not even be buried freely nor could flowers be laid over their graves, nor, mark, nor their graves be marked down. Some several hundred persons were wounded by firearms, while only in January and February of this year, 204, 204 youngsters and children were wounded. Several Albanians were found shot dead on the roadside, some drowned in the rivers. Some were sent to their families in wooden boxes with explanations that they, were, that they had committed suicide by hanging themselves or by jumping from the prison windows. Some were never found. Serbe, 
që më pastaj do të shfrydzohe si kasus beli për e presalje shtetrore dhe qërim brutal hesapesh me populatën shqiptare. This widespread opinion among the Albanians uh, is that uh, the authorities, the Serbian authorities, the dark forces within the Serbian authorities do apply this uncomprehensible police violence and state terror over the Albanians in order to incite a popular, uh, popular revolt uh, on behalf of the Albanians, which would in turn then be used as a causus belli or as a pretext for a much larger scale or a massive, massive scale massacres and reprisal, reprisal of Albanian, po, Albanian population in Yugoslavia and push, a, push a, uh, away once more and hopefully for longer the democratization of the democracy that is, be, that is sweeping Europe and is reaching Kosovo as well. A number of photographs of, of the people uh, being affected by the, uh, by the police violence in Kosovo. Një incizim në video kaset të një vajzet të helmuar 18 vjeqare dhe pasojat e helmimit të saj të cilën e solin nëna e saj antare e shoqatës son. A video cassette recording of the poisoning attacks that uh, an 18 year old girl has suffered in her, in her home and has been recorded by the members of her family and was brought to me by the lady which is a member of our women's association. The problem of Kosovo is political and human. I have lost two people during World War II, including my father. I have spent 11 years in jail, in communist jails of Albania and Yugoslavia. I am therefore very sensitive to the violation of human rights. I will say only the following. A week ago, Adem Demachi, which we call the Nelson Mandela of Kosovo, was released. We are very pleased with it. Last year, I believe it was in June, we, uh, he gave an interview to the semi-official newspaper Borba in Belgrade. I will try to relate the best of my uh, ability. Question, what do you think about the Serbs? Demachi, Serbs are a generous people with a glorious past. Question, we are told that you hate the Serbs. Demachi smiles, right, Borba, and answered, if danger would threaten my son or a Serbian neighbor, I would tell the danger, take my son. This is the terrorist, quote unquote, Demachi, who spent 27 years in jail. Mr. Chairman, I cannot find a greener branch of olive than this. Today, I take that olive branch and I appeal to all my Serbian friends, let's work together for freedom, for democracy and general prosperity. Together, we will succeed. Divided, we will both perish. Thank you. I'd like to call on Congressman uh, Diogardi. Well, I would uh, like to conclude before I just introduce some people who came a long way and I've gotten notes from other people who we could not hear as much as we would like, as you can see, the patience of the chair. It is ironic that the country that broke first with the Soviet system and established equality among its nationalities for 40 years should now have Eastern Europe's gravest ethnic problem. This just appeared last week and I want to submit the entire article for the record, Mr. Chairman. I believe these people are here today because they want this room and this hearing to be a model for the whole world, especially in Kosovo. The memory of this uh, five-hour hearing with all its pain and all its anguish will go down as a historic episode as the people of uh, the great country of Yugoslavia learn to live together in peace and harmony. This hearing is adjourned.